the last several years, I've been interviewing over 500 ca candidates. Most of them were great candidates with many years of experience, lots of confidence. We could talk about their product, their tools, their infrastructure, and, and, their, different, and their different technologies. They loved it. They knew all their tricks. However, most of them didn't pass our, our interview. Now, how, uh, why is that? How come they seem so promising, and yet they failed to pass our interview? I know what you're thinking, and no, our interview is not, <laughs> our interview is not impossible or extra hard. We don't ask tricky questions or riddles like, how would you escape a blender if you were the size of a coin? Well, one sec. Just a normal interview. For us, most of the candidates failed for the same reasons. We knew the technology stuck very well. We could talk about the architecture and design, the tools. We knew the advantages and all the tricks. We, we used it daily. They loved it. But they didn't know how it worked. They didn't know how those tools were built, how they were implemented, and why did their company decide to use them over some different alternative. They, uh, in their eyes, their technology stock was a silver bullet that has no disadvantages. Everyone should be, be, should be using it, them and everybody else. We call them expert beginners. They think they're experts, but yet, they're still just beginners. On the other hand, there is the other type of candidates and developers in general. We call them the wolf. Not the animal and not the wolf of Wall Street. Like Winston Wolf from Pulp Fiction, the one who solves problems, any kind of problems. The wolf is all over the place. He is the one with the answers. He is the he'll know guy or girl. He knows how things work why, how they're implemented, and why did the company choose to use them over something else. He is one of those people who drives the innovation in the company, not because the new things are hot and sexy, but because he can distinguish between what's cool and what, what we actually need. He's the one we want uh, he's the one we want to hire. He's the one you want in your company and in your team. So what's the difference between them? The expert beginners and the wolf. The expert beginners think that they're experts in their field, even though they're not. All their knowledge and experience re relies only of what we're exposed to in their day-to-day -day job and what other people tell them. They don't know the why, the how, or provide alternatives and different points of view. But what about the, the uh, as, as I was saying, they, were, they have pretended knowledge. But what about the wolf? Well, you guessed right. The wolf actually knows his stuff. He has real knowledge. The wolf is not an expert beginner. He is not necessarily a real expert. But he's on the path to someday maybe become a real expert. To go this path, he cannot rely only on what his job teaches him and out of the box just working solutions. He must actively learn. The wolf is an active learner. What is an active learner? How can one become an active learner? This is exactly what we're going to talk about today. So hi, I'm Dennis. I'm the head of integration at HiredScore. We help large companies to achieve their hiring and recruiting goals by matching candidates to different job acquisitions. We use it by leveraging deep data integrations and artificial intelligence. Before that, I was a team leader in, at Sears Israel, working on a multi-million multi user-based uh, e-commerce platform. So for the last almost 10 years, I've been speaking and writing a lot about people growth, company culture, management, and personal improvement. I'm constantly looking for different ways to improve my company, my teams, and myself in different aspects. You can read about the stuff I care about and the things I do on my blog, and you're more than, well, more than welcome to follow me on Twitter. So I'm really excited to be here today and talk to you about several things. We'll start from the basics. How does one acquire a new skill, any, any skill? We'll discuss the path of the expert beginner, how to avoid it, and how to become an active learner. Throughout this talk, I'll share some of, my personal, uh, some of my personal experience, my tools, and methods that I use that work for me and for different people that I've shared with them. And I hope that you can also leverage them and use, it, and use it by yourself. So let's start. And let's start from the very basic. How does one acquire a new skill? Any kind of skill. It can be cooking, learning to play a new game, learning a new language, learning to code, or learning another JavaScript framework. This is the Dreyfus model for skill acquisition. It basically states but in order for one to become expert in anything, he must go through, through a long path and different phases. 
remove from face to face by understanding that there is a bigger picture of what you currently know and doing the necessary steps to improve, grow, and actually become better at what, uh, than, than what we previously were. This is, this is a slight extension for the original model. It adds an up another path. As such, the advanced beginner can move one of two ways. He can move to the competent by seeing the bigger picture, embracing it, and doing whatever, he, whatever it's necessary to actually grow and improve. Or he can graduate to, to become an expert beginner uh, by, by assuming that he's actually uh, graduated to expert. Now, this is a very dangerous place, because by assuming that one, that most people assume when they think they're experts, they actually stop learning and stop trying to improve themselves and basically are stuck in the same place for a, lo for a long time. I love this chart. It easily explains how we might think of ourselves when we learn new things. By following the orange line, you can see that after a while, we're pretty much sure that we know everything that there is to know. It happens to all of us. But for most of us, uh, this, this phase dis uh, disappears very quickly because we understand that there is so much more to learn. However, this place can be a trap. And this is exactly the trap of the extra beginners because the extra beginners are stuck at this place and they think that they actually know everything there is to know. You see, the, the extra beginners don't, are not aware of all the other things that there is to know. They think that what they know is the whole picture. They just don't know how little they actually know. So, why is that? How come some developers turn this way and others don't? Our world constantly keeps moving. New technologies and tools appear every year. That may become, and the cool thing to do is to spot those things and use them as soon as possible. That makes becoming an expert really hard because everything basically changes every year. And it makes some developers constantly change their technologies and environments without having enough time to deep dive and really understand how, how things work and gain the proper experience. Another reason is, uh, is the wrong perception of some developers that the fact that they are full-stack developers means that they are experts. Now, don't get me wrong here. There are some full-stack developers who are definitely experts. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about those developers who have completed a React and Node tutorial and built a to-do app. They've deployed it with a single click to Heroku and by so completed an end-to-end -end workflow and a product without any understanding of how this magic happens, how will it scale, and, how, and in which cases they should not use one of those plat uh, platforms. Two or three more tutorials like this, and that's it. They have nailed software. They are freaking unicorns. Another reason is the fact that some developers are stuck in the same place for a long time and after a while stop learning new things. The trivial path is when someone is sitting comfortably in, his, in, in the same team, working on the same product, developing the same features, fixing the same bugs, and using the same tools over and over again, and after a while, stop learning new things. The not-so-trivial path is when someone actually changes teams, changes his, even, even changes his company, but still remains in the same ecosystem, in the same role, using the same tools, and again, after a while, not learning new things. Those, those people, those developers, might have, seen, might have seen that they have lots of years of experience, but when talking to them, you couldn't hear, you couldn't hear all this experience. I've seen many developers with six, nine, and even 10 years of, ten, ten years of experience on, on their resumes, but when you were talking to them, it was like t talking to a mature, but still a junior developer. And I think that this sentence right here on the slide really explains it. There's a big difference between someone who has really 10 years of experience and someone who, who lived the same experience over and over again for 10 years. And the last reason is the fact that expert beginners rely, uh, rely only on what they know, on, uh, on what they learn in their companies, in their job, in their day-to-day, -day, and, and of what other people tell them. That makes them learn and grow, but it has a limit. There are many more ways and many more solutions and, and, and alternatives out there. The expert beginners simply are not aware of them. When asking them, when talking, asking them questions, challenging them, and just speaking about different stuff, you'll usually hear things like, Oh, this is a black box. I don't know really how it works. It's just, don't touch it. Um, this thing I saw on Stack Overflow, it has many upvotes. Uh, I liked it, so I copy-pasted it. Um, Angular sucks. React is the best. Why? It just is. 
And my personal favorite, because Dan Abramov says so. Does it sound familiar? I know it does. So what you want here is depth, is the deep understanding of how things work and why. And I think that this is the core difference between the expert beginner and the active learner. The expert beginners are not, uh, the, sorry, the active learners are not necessarily experts. They don't necessarily know everything. But the, the most important thing is that they know that they don't know things. They know that there's always a bigger picture than what we currently see. They use the it depends answer because there are no silver bullets. Everything has advantages and disadvantages. They are not ashamed of not knowing or not knowing, or not knowing uh, answers for different questions. They are willing to constantly, they are constantly willing to deep dive, learn, and understand. They develop a sense that tells them that there must be a better way when they're looking at a solution that is just doesn't just doesn't feel uh, good enough, even when they're the ones who suggested it in the first place. So, we've talked about the expert beginners and the different reasons, and I think it's time that we discuss how can we become active learners. One second. So, how can one become an active learner? Well, everyone can. Everyone can become active learners, because it's not a phase, it's a mindset, it's a state of mind. One, that when you embrace it, you can become active learners. Now, CodeMotion is a developer's conference. So I've created an algorithm so all of you can understand how you become active learners. As long as you've always seen that there's a bigger picture that you, don't, that you currently don't know, there are more things to learn, and you're willing to do the required steps, the necessary phases, and the things that you need to do in order to really grow and improve, you'll become active learners. And I wanted to share, to share three methods and tools that I personally embrace and use daily. It helped me, and I believe it can help any active learner to achieve his or her goals. The first one is reading. And it's the easiest one. It's the most obvious one. The internet is full of information about anything. It's just there waiting for you. Read about the stuff you know, about the tools that you're using, the frameworks that you're using. Understand how they're implemented, why they were built. There is no reason for you not to fully understand the things that you use daily. And also, read about what you don't know. Stop believing in magic and black boxes. Google them. The information is there. Understand and become experts at, at your field. I want to share uh, some, uh, a method and some tools that I always use and help, it helps me to become really organized about my reading and focus on my th the things that matter to me. I have a Trello board which is basically a board with sticky notes, and I add an, a term every time I hear something in the office that I don't really understand. Uh, some framework or some buzzword, whatever. I add it there, and later when I have time, I Google it and try to understand how it works. Usually I find my answers uh, in different blog posts, and when I scan this blog and I find different information that's still relevant, uh, and I want to be like, um, informed of new things, I add it to Feedly, which is an RSS reader. It's a simple tool which just keeps me keep up, uh, remain up to date for, uh, for new stuff. Every, every day, all of us are stumble upon lots of different links to lots of different content. A con content that you usually want to read, but who has time? So that usually leads us to forgetting about it. For this matter, I use Pocket, which is basically an aggregator which helps, helps me to add links to it. And every time uh, I, I see a link that I wanted to, to read and I don't have the time right now, add it there. Later, when I have time, it, it, um, I just go there and read. It, it, helps me not, it helps me to keep track of everything I want, I want, I want to know and basically not lose information. Um, another thing that I think is worth sharing is podcasts. It's, it's already not that new, but I, as I've seen, not many people use them. There are a lot of podcasts on different stuff, both technical and not, and not only technical. Some of them long and some of them short. It's worth subscribing to them and uh, finding the topics that you care about, because usually we talk about new things, uh, and we always try to explain like, the, the use cases and the advantages, and when you should use them and when you should, uh, should not. M one of my favorites is five, min five Minutes JavaScript. It's a five-minute podcast. It, uh, it talks about different frameworks, uh, how to use them, when and when not. I think it's a really good time, to, uh, uh, really good use of your time when you commute to work or uh, when, you, uh, when you work out. And the last method that I wanted to share with you is when we try to look for different alternatives or different solutions to the same problem, 
I usually just type it, type it term in Google and add the verses to it. Google automatically autocompletes different alternatives and different solutions that provide me a lot of context and a, wide, and a wide variety of options to look and to really understand what's the best way to solve something. OK. The second method is sharing your knowledge. Because now, when you all started to read so, so much, you'll be stumbled upon a lot of different information that is relevant and interesting. And usually, it's not, it's not relevant and interesting only for you. It's relevant also for your team members, your colleagues, and friends. So in this case, we should, uh, we should share it. Write them an email, tweet them, Slack them, or even write a blog. But, uh, but not, don't just copy paste the link and leave it out there. Try to summarize it. Why did you, what, what was it that you liked about this article? And why did you decide to share it with them? What was so relevant that you decided to share it with other people and not just leave it to you? By doing so, you exper experience a double impact. First, by sharing relevant and interesting information with others, You'll, be, you'll help them learn and grow, and basically be, you'll be helping improve in your environment. But the second impact, and this is the, most, the, the more imp uh, interesting one, is on you. Because when writing about something, you cannot share half-truths or present shallow understanding. You, wanna, you don't want to just uh, share a link, talk about something that is not really relevant to your team, or something you don't really understand. So it, fo it will force you to really understand the topic that you're talking about. The, the, to extract the, uh, the, the important things that you wanted to, to, to share with your team. This is one of the reasons why I've decided to open my blog back then. Before I write about anything, I really try to create a solid and a holistic view of this topic. So I read, and I read from different perspectives and different angles in order to really understand the topic I'm talking about. And only then I start to, read, so I start to write about it. And the last method that I wanted to share today is after-school activities. We all have different challenges in our works. It helps us learn and grow, but it has, a, it has a, its, its own limit. There are many more ways to learn and improve our knowledge and experience. Active learners use after-school activities in order to gain uh, knowledge and experience that their job simply cannot provide. So um, go to meetups. This is one of my favorite things. Meet other people who use the same technologies as you do, the same tools, and, or, or some people who try to solve the same problems that you're facing. Talk to them, share your experience, how are you approaching a certain problem. Hear them and learn from them. Together, try to discover, discover the best ways to solve each other's problems. Also, you'll build, you'll build technical connections that are so important in our, in our world. Another great after-school activity that I like is contributing to open source projects. You all have lots of open source projects that you're using daily in, in, your, in, in your work. Do you know how they're implemented? Do you know how they work? What kind of help they need? I really recommend you later to find the time to go, go to GitHub, look, for, look, for, look for those projects, try to understand how they, uh, to walk through their code, understand how they're written and how they work. And, and later, try to, to help them out. Um, find different issues that they're currently having and try to solve them. Add new features. Contributing to an active open source project will lift your skills higher than ever. Another great thing is, another great thing is that website that has all those answers to all our developer questions, Stack Overflow, well, those answers don't uh, appear out of nowhere. People submit questions and answers. Uh, I challenge you to later, when you have time, to go to, to Stack Overflow, look for the topics that you're familiar with, and try to answer different questions that are still un, uh, un, being unanswered. You'll be surprised of how easy and how, and how many questions you can answer and contribute. And again, you'll, you'll, you'll experience this double impact, because when helping others uh, to answer questions, you'll first of all help them and really uh, allow them to, to continue working on the things we, we wanted to know. But also, in order to create a proper answer and submit it to Stack Overflow, you really need to understand the topic that you're talking about. So usually, you'll find yourself reading about this topic, creating this holistic view of the, of the solution that you're proposing, and then submitting it. So again, you'll, feel, you'll experience this double impact on you. We all have those magical frameworks in our companies, right, that, sol that solves all the problems and saves lots of time. Well, it's time to stop believing in magic. It's, that, it's time to re-implement those frameworks by ourselves. It's time to face the challenges that our tech leaders have solved for us. In order to 
make our skills stronger. And face these challenges, you don't only have to do it in, in the ways you're familiar with. Don't do only what you know and, all of, and only use the things that you're used to, do, you're used to in your day-to-day -day job. Try implementing some, some of the problems and, and uh, challenges in a different language or use an alternative framework that you don't use in your company. But don't do it because it's cool. Don't do it because it's new and shiny. Do it in order to gain another perspective, another point of view of a, of a problem that you're solving and a, different, and a different solution. You'll discover that no matter the language or the framework, the best practices and the principles remain the same. They are relevant everywhere. The principles and the best practices like solid, automation, dry, KISS, and, and, and many more across product, cross platform, and cross language. By rediscovering those principles again and again, you'll sharpen your understanding of their importance. And it, and it will drive you to apply them to any place that they are missing. So try to, so from, now on, from now on, guys, try to, to challenge yourself and create magic, magic by yourself. And really, just, just code. Open a laptop and code anything you want. It can be something you're passionate about or something that you don't truly really understand. Because every time you'll do it, every time you open a new project, develop a new, pro uh, a new, a new, a new product that you consider a, mag a, a magical one or a black box, you'll make your skills stronger your ex and your experience, uh, and your experience uh, knowledge that you thought you didn't have before. And as Confucius said, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. So, one more thing. Let's say we do all of that. We read tons of stuff, we go to meetups, contribute to open source, and even switch from Windows to Mac. Is it enough? The answer is no. All those tools and all those methods that I've shared with you are only methods and tools that can help an active learner to achieve his goals and drive him to the path that he wants to go. But to, to do that, you need to know where you want to go. You need to know what, 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 is the, what is the vision that you want to have. What, what experience do you want to, what kind of expertise do you want to, do you want to have right now? So, <clears throat> one second, yeah. So, we, don't, we all are busy people. We don't have time to fool around and to do things that we, or basically waste our time. By not having a clear goal and a clear, clear plan, we can find ourselves reading lots of different things watching different videos, hearing different podcasts, going to tons of meetups meet, meet and conferences, but not learning in the pace that we want, would have want. Because when we invest our time, we want to do it in a way that will really benefit us. So as, exactly as your companies that you work in, who have a vision and a roadmap and goals for their product, you need to, to, you need to rethink of yourself in a way. And I think that this is the most important takeaway from this talk. In order to truly grow, improve, and evolve, you, you need to treat yourself as a project. In order to truly grow, improve, and evolve, you need to treat yourself as a project. Your companies have a vision and goals and plans for their product. They measure it, they evolve it, they change along the way, but they know where they're going, and so, and so should you. Create a vision of yourself. What kind of, who do you want to be? What kind of expertise do you want to have? Then, build a roadmap, build a plan, Build a plan that can help you to, go, to achieve those goals. Define them. What kind of uh, new frameworks do you need to know? What, do, what kind of design patterns do, do you wish to, to, to master? And maybe different roles that you want to take in your company. But you need to think about yourself and manage it. And manage it. Then, when you have this plan, you can go it. You can go along it and uh, follow it. It's okay to change and pivot the different uh, things you thought from the, from the, that you decided from the start. It's, it's totally no, normal. But just remember, it's important that you will be the ones who are managing it and not be managed by the situation. And of course, this is not a one-time thing. All the things I've talked about, it's, you need to do it again and again and again. So, some uh, takeaway points from this talk. Active learner is not a phase. It's a mindset. It's a state of mind that anyone can embrace. You do it by understanding that there is a bigger picture and, and there are yet so many things to learn out there. We can always be better than what we are. You need to treat yourself as a project, to define this vision, to define what is an expert for you, what do you want to do and how you want to, you want to achieve this. And then you can use the tools that I've shared with you. Read, write, 
I personally recommend you try answering Stack Overflow questions. It's so much fun. You all, you, you're not only helping others, you're improving yourself and this rank, this, uh, your status there. It's really fun to uh, see the score growing and growing. And of course, participate in different after-school activities. Meet new people like you do here today in the conference. Talk to them. Don't only stay with your friends. Try to understand how others are solving the same challenges as you do. And again and again. You should do it again and again. Because if you really keep doing it, eventually you'll, you'll become the wolf. Thank you. Well, uh, we have some time for questions, right? Yeah, go ahead. This uh, was a very interesting uh, talk. Uh, I have so many ideas and things One to second. say. One second. Talk again? Yeah, yeah. Do you hear me? No. Testing, oh, testing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I said, this I love this talk. Uh, it's very. Uh, I, uh, thank you for the term active learner because I uh, I am learning quite fast recently and I'm thinking that's the that's the term I need I am an active learner uh, and, and <laughs> I can say uh, from experience uh, that it feels uh, very liberating very empowering when you when you do that uh, I do have a question I decided to become a Hadoop uh, specialist after 20 years of Oracle uh, DBA experience uh, and the talk to many companies and said, this is what I want. I had the plan, this is my project, uh, this is what I want. Uh, I find it, even with all my enthusiasm and all my things that I do now, I now make YouTube videos to explain in sh short, a couple of minutes what I do, uh, what, what, what these products do that I work with. Uh, I find it still very hard to explain to them that, yes, I don't have all the experience, but I'm an active, yeah. I, I, I'm active, an active learner. How do I convey that? Because you apparently managed to find that out of all the four, 500 people you've interviewed. But uh, how, how do companies see an active learner? How do they detect one? Okay, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, I think that if I'll, if I'll focus from the things you've said on how the companies will detect an active learner when they're talking to, to different people, right? So basically, I think that as I said, like in the, in the first couple of slides, the main difference is the understanding of how things work and how they're built and why. In my, in my companies that I work, we, all, we usually don't just ask people to you know, like share your experience and tell me what do you like in th this framework and how did you solve this challenge. You will usually try to ask like broader things. OK, this is the architecture. What was your part in it? This part. What about this part? How does it work? Why is it here? Usually, the people who are actually learning and, and really the ones you want to be kind of active learners are the people who are interested in many more things because we need this holistic view of how things work. We don't, we don't want to treat things like black boxes and stuff. So basically, if you can understand how things that are not only, that are not only by yourself, that you don't do by yourself work, and that you also know the disadvantages of things. Because usually when talking to, to people who work in, uh, in, different in different projects, they know how things work and why they're so good for them. But they don't know when they shouldn't do. And this is, how, this is why you, 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 we all usually see people who did something in their previous company and then try to just replicate it in, in, in another company without understanding the, the actual needs. So if I need to summarize it, it's really understanding how things work and why people choose them. And the advantages along with the disadvantages. Any more questions? Well, thank you. <laughs>